I don't think it's B. I don't think it's D. <clears throat> I think it's A. Medium confidence. All right, I'm evaluating a child with a developmental disability for feeding concerns. The OTR notes that the child presents with tongue thrust. Which, de which description best describes this child's presentation? Tongue thrust? Low tone? Open mouth in which tongue passively hangs out? No, I don't think so. Exaggerated, uncontrolled pushing of food or liquid out the mouth? Yes. I've actually met a lot of patients who have tongue thrust. I think my confidence is high for this question. It is a mock test. It's more of a practice test to see. Yeah, mock test to see where I'm at. Where I'm at. To see what I know, what I don't know. <clears throat> I'm glad you guys like the music. Fertility. Oh, um, here I got you. It's good music, huh? It's called um, slice of life background music. I, I would listen to it religiously while working. Now that I'm studying, I'm listening to it while studying. I'm glad you like it too. No problem. Elementary school student with a visual perceptual impairment. An OTR is working with a school base. I'm going to lower the camera a bit. Okay. An OTR is working with a school based problem solving team. Homeroom teacher, visual perception impairment. Let me read the question first. What are the three things he should ask about the student's concerns? Okay. He's in fourth grade. He, he writes down stuff in assignments, notebook, completing worksheets, long division, spelling, looking up words in the dictionary. He frequently makes errors when completing these tasks, such as skipping items to be copied down, writing the wrong number or letter. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. A questionnaire about perception, how visual difficulties might observe the child getting on and off the bus. Hmm. Review the child's assignment notebook. Mm. Observe during a school assembly. Mm. Discuss the concerns of, about the student with the homeroom teacher. Mm. Verbally spell a series of words. Oh, A would be good. A would be good because... Oh. I just spat on myself. Sorry. <laughs> a would be good because it would help determine whether or not the kid doesn't know how to spell the word or if he can't spell the word because he can't see the word like is it a vision or is it like a cognitive thing a is definitely right i think it would be good to see how he walks around like can he can he see other things in his surroundings so maybe observing him at a school assembly is also a good one need one more mm. i think reviewing his assignment notebook okay medium confidence next question an eight-year-old child with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis requires a splint to prevent drifting of the metaphor Metal, me, metal, the metacarpal phalangeal joints, which are right here. So he needs a an eight year old with rheumatoid arthritis. That is so, that is so sad. A splint to prevent drifting towards the small finger. So like drifting towards this way, what would be most appropriate? Oh, I don't know my splints very well, but. I don't know what a cock-up splint is. A dynamic splint? Mm. Ulnar deviation? Wait, I feel... I don't know if this is the correct thinking, but we're trying to prevent drifting of his joints towards this way. And then an ulnar deviation splint is a splint that 
has your hand going is to prevent your hand from going this way. And so I think it keeps it straight this way. So I think it might be B. My confidence is low. <clears throat> I'm evaluating a seven-year-old with ADHD who has significant handwriting delays. Which assessment is best to use to compare this child's handwriting performance with that of the same age peers? <clears throat> mm, I don't know any of these assessments. Seven-year-old, ADHD, handwriting delays. With that of same age peers. Print, Minnesota handwriting test, Peabody developmental. I don't think it's the Peabody. I remember hearing about that in school. Minnesota handwriting test, print tool, handwriting assessment. Beer, Bucktonica, developmental test of visual motor integration. I don't think it's A, because it doesn't say that he has visual motor dis difficulties. Uh, I've never heard of B, so I'm going to go with C and also C for Carol. Confidence is low. Okay, we are now on wheelchair questions. A child is being discharged home after spending two weeks in rehab after a stroke. The client has arrived for a transfer safety training. From a transfer... From a, for a wheelchair to bed standing pivot transfer. Which of the following steps would be the first in the sequence of the transfer? Discharge home after spending two weeks in rehab after a stroke. I should know this. I have transferred tons of patients from a wheelchair to a bed. To the point where my back was really starting to hurt. So the first thing you would do is... You would position the wheelchair as close to the bed as possible. And then you would move the footrest out of the way. And then you would set the brakes. And then you'd have them scoot forward. So it's A. Confidence high. I am fitting a client with a pelvic deformity and minimal dynamic sitting balance impairments to a new wheelchair. Pelvic deformity and minimal dynamic sitting balance. Minimal dynamic sitting balance impairments to a new wheelchair. The client lives alone and must be able to independently get the wheelchair, get out, get the wheelchair and all accessories into and out of a car for community mobility. What type of cushion would be most appropriate for a client with this issue? Hmm. Hmm. Minimal dynamic sitting balance. What that means is that when he's sitting, if he moves around while sitting, his balance is kind of impaired. Basically, like sitting down, reaching for stuff, bending over, going side to side might cause him to lose his balance while sitting. So if that's the case, he also has a pelvic deformity, mm, lives alone, has to get into the out of the wheelchair accessories. I don't know. I don't really know what the difference is between gel filled and air filled. I feel like it shouldn't be gel or air film filled because I feel like it should be like a stable surface if he's having so much trouble with sitting balance. Alternating pressure. I feel like all of these don't seem right. Custom contoured. That one seems most appropriate. Like, yeah, all the other ones just seem like they're not very stable for a man who already isn't very sta stable. I'm gonna do custom contoured maybe? Because he has a pelvic deformity, too. So maybe getting it custom contoured would be the most appropriate. Confidence is kind of low for this one. Next one. 
Uh, Klein has preferred to OT for wheeled mobility assessment. He has a standard wheelchair, which he can propel, but we want to recommend a power wheelchair so he can visit around the neighborhood with greater ear ease. Mm. No change in functional status or ability to accomplish daily to accomplish ADLs at home. Okay. His wife says that she is able to push him in the neighborhood if he needs help, but he tells him that he needs to get out of the house alone. Mm. Why is he ineligible for Medicare coverage for a power wheelchair under current regulations? He prefers but does not need a power wheelchair. That is probably the most correct answer. <laughs> Turtle! No, the timer! <laughs> I'm trapped! I'm trapped! <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's what I get for taking a whole week off? I didn't take a week off. I took, what, four days? I was on yesterday. <laughs> And, oh, so you repay me by re-trapping me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the three subs. Appreciate it. I'm going to get below 45 hours today. Screw you guys. <clears throat> School meeting, reading of boring administrative stuff. Because at that age, it would be a lot more guidance from teachers and staff and less so measured in cognitive abilities. Mm hmm Though I think with that question, the school assembly one, it was mostly just seeing how he moves around. Like, because we were trying to see if he's having difficulty with handwriting because he can't see. So if he can't see, is is the handwriting difficulty because he can't see or is, is this something something else? So if you see how, if we can watch him walk around school and see how he attends a school meeting, which requires you to like, you know, stand single file, um, like line up where your spot is, like go to the correct location. If we, if we observe how he does with that, then we can rule out like, is, are his problems vision or is it something else? Can he see where he's going? Four, day work, four days is a work week in some countries. But it was Lunar New Year weekend. I'm sorry. I should have just worked through the holiday. You're right. How dare I take some family time? How dare I? <laughs> okay, this question is, I think, high confidence. Hmm... <clears throat> a client who uses an ultra lightweight wheelchair asks whether the chair can accommodate a wraparound lap board. OTR is not familiar with this kind of lap board. Who on the rehab team would be the best person for the OTR to consult? Hmm. 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 It's not B. Could be A. Whether the chair can support a wraparound lap board? Not familiar. Mm, rehab engineer? It might be another OTR. Because um, I'm thinking about it and like, it's like who on the rehab team would be the best person to consult for this information? But a rehab team? A rehab team doesn't have a medical equipment supplier. And a rehab team doesn't have a rehab, like, there's no such, what is a rehabilitation engineer? That's, like, something that's, a rehab team would have an, a physical therapist, a speech therapist, a social worker, the physician on, on board, and an, an occupational therapist. I hope I'm not overthinking, I hope I'm not reading this question too literally, but C and D would not be on a rehab team. I'm going to say A. Medium confidence. 
Because although those other people would know about whether or not the wheelchair would work, they're not necessarily on the team. He's measuring a client for a new wheelchair. Hip width, 18. Doesn't use any lateral trunk supports, but lives in a cold climate, frequently wears bulky clothing. What seat should the OTR recommend? Mm -hmm. I'm not very versed in specific number in, in inches of the wheelchair. Mm. He wears bulky clothing, but he doesn't use any lateral trunk supports, you know? So, like, I feel like... I feel like even with bulky clothing, 18 inches is okay. I think 18. You generally don't want a wheelchair that's too big because you don't feel very supported in it. If he's already not using any lateral trunk supports, then I feel like making it even bigger is not the best option. I'm going to say 18. I don't know. My confidence for this one is low. Hi, Bartman. If it was another OTR, shouldn't the first one know that? You know, that is correct. The first one should know that, but I think it's also important to look to your colleagues when you don't know what you don't know. Like, different OTs have different skill sets and have worked with different patients. And so, I think, although it's important to know everything, I think it's just not possible you may have some colleagues that have worked with like, oh, like stroke patients more. So you have some colleagues who have worked with like, oh, amputees more. So I think it's important to look for expertise when necessary. Though I hope that is in line with whatever they're freaking looking for. The client says, my pain is really bad. Forcing me to stay in bed 24-7, I am not able to take care of myself. Which clarifying response is the best? Which clarifying response? I feel bad that you are experiencing pain, forcing you to stay in bed. It's not B. It's not A. It's not C. Mm, actually, I don't like. Actually, I don't like D either. I don't like any of them. I'm listening to a client, and the client says pain's really bad, forcing me to stay in bed. I'm not able to take care of myself at all. <laughs> what kind of question is this? <gasps> Just don't have pain. <gasps> I feel I feel like you poor thing. That's awful. Where is the pain is like not appropriate. I feel bad that you're experiencing pain 24/7. Forcing you to stay in bed. Mm, I feel like B doesn't isn't phrased well. I don't like the rep the repeating of the twenty four seven. It appears your pain is really bad, forcing you to stay in bed. When I read A, it just seemed not good. But then now I read D, and it's oh, I think it's D. I think it's D because it's clarify. It's more clarifying. In the sense where, like, the guy says, like, I'm not able to take care of myself. But then D is, like, what exactly that he can't do. Like, he can't go to the bathroom. He can't get food from the kitchen. I think I reasoned it out. I think the answer is D. How many questions are there? Mm. <sighs> using a wheelchair after discharge wearing an adult diaper and refraining from using the bathroom no Refer to home care OT for wheelchair mobility training. 
Training in a three-point wheelchair turning technique in a narrow hallway. Mm. A bedside coma between the wall. Mm. No, 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 no. You would not do bedside commode because he's already achieved independence and in wheelchair mobility. So that would be taking a step back. Wearing a diaper is just no way. <laughs> it's either A or B. I'm pretty sure it's A. Excuse me, but is it B? Because it says he's already achieved wheelchair mobility independence. So would you still refer to home care OT for wheelchair mobility training if, you, if he's already... Training in three-point wheelchair training technique and maybe... Maybe B. Confidence medium. A new augmentative and alternative communication device to be used in the classroom. The client uses a wheelchair, limited pro movement. Ooh. Limited movement at both shoulders and elbows. What would you first determine? Mounting system of the, AC, of the AAC vocabulary, teacher's availability, type of control interface. Ooh. Mm, I think it could be A. Basically, there's this child who has a communication device. Probably He probably doesn't speak. He has a wheelchair, so I assume the communication device is probably like a little tablet that you can press buttons on and it'll say words out loud. So he uses a wheelchair and he can't really move limited movement proximally at both shoulders and elbows. So he can't move his arms very much develops and then so what should we do first i feel like you should mount it first so that he can reach it properly vocabulary teacher's availability for the training type of control interface suitable i think the mounting system is important if he can't reach it then he can't even use it so confidence b a 76 year old Client will be using a wheelchair after discharge from acute rehab the client has achieved independence on level but still requires minimal assistance for transfer Oh wait, this was the same, same, same scenario as last question. What will be the most appropriate action for the OT to take? <clears throat> mm, so before we have a home evaluation with them, before that, what should we do? Dis interview the daughter rega regarding detailed measurements and physical and acceptance. Nah. Discuss with the client functional mobility limitations and level assistance required for as part of fall prevention education. Uh. Hmm. This one's kind of hard. Provide the client and daughter with information regarding the. No. I think it's A. Never mind. It's A. Medium confident. Okay. I am almost done with the last question of this topic. A 12 year old client with cerebral palsy and spastic quadriplegia wants to access the internet and email on the computer. Poor head control. Uses a headband to maintain the head in mid midline. Okay. He can turn the head to the right to operate suction machines. Using the head control input, the client's left extremity has no okay, no movement in the left side. The left elbow has a 90 degree flexion contracture. Okay. Mm. So that means his elbow is like stuck like this. The client's able to flex the right shoulder to 60 degrees against gravity. So he can, like, bring his right shoulder, like... Okay, wait. So if his left arm is stuck like this, and his right arm is like this, the right elbow has no trace active movement. No active wrist or finger movement except minimal right thumb adduction. So his thumb can do 
this. And that's about it. So... And he's... Yeah, Cerebral Palsy. He wants... Okay. What is the best input control? Switch encoding mouth stick eye tracking? Mm. He's able to turn the head to the right. He has poor head control and he's using a headband to maintain the head in midline. Poor head control. This is a tough one. This this is this is a sad this makes me sad too. This question makes me sad because thinking about someone who is this disabled makes me sad. Hmm. I mean, if he has poor head control and and no wrist or finger movement, mouth stick control, it would not be eye tracking since he can't, since he has poor head control, it wouldn't be head pointer. It might be mouth stick. Okay, he uses a headband to maintain the head in midline. In that case, maybe eye tracking would be viable. Because he can use the headband to maintain the head in midline. I don't know what D is. I like have no I clue I have no idea what D is. Switch encoding input. So I'm gonna say It's not C, it's either A or B. What's mouth stick control? This doesn't seem comfortable. I'm gonna go with the eye tracking device. I have low confidence on this one. <sighs> oh, okay. That set of questions is done. I wonder how much I have left to go. Am I done when I finish 16 out of 16? Is that is that what this is? <gasps> Hi, Joe! How long? Is the real test formatted like this? Yes, it is. The real test is literally just like this in the sense where like there's only one right answer or there's or you get questions uh, th where there's like four questions, one right an four answers, one right answer, and then there's or there's six answers and there's three right answers. So either pick one right or pick three right. It's pretty much the exact same. My test is four hours long. How many questions? On the NBCOT. You have four hours, 200 questions. Fudge, I'm so scared. Four hours and 200 questions. I'm so scared. That's so scary. Oh. Thanks, hero. The best controller for Valorant? Definitely the eye tracking. Hi, Kohai. Happy Sunday. Today's your Sunday, right? How's your Sunday going, Kohai? You smart. You is kind. You is wise. You is smart. That's you. Thanks for the five stream streak, hero. I appreciate you. Thanks, thanks. I have over a minute a question. Four hours, 60 times four is 240 minutes, 200 questions. Yeah, you're right. Oh God, I'm a slow test taker, so I'm scared. I want chocolate. I want chocolate. I want chocolate. At this point, I'm just eating all the Kit Kats. I want chocolate. I want chocolate. Beat. Hello, Beat. Did you get? Did you get the? I don't know if it was delivered yet, but did you get the, the booster box yet? Wait, why are you playing Cage Three and not Cage Two? Isn't Cage Two like the better one?
It made me laugh. Did you open the cards already? Don't riz me. Okay, riz you got it. Is there anything you don't carry in? My pride and confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your last name. So I put B for B. I hope you get good pulls. Beat one Pokemon cards for a Christmas giveaway last year, 2022. <clears throat> and I forgot. <laughs> And I forgot to send out the giveaway prize, so I finally sent it out. <clears throat> I didn't spell the first name right. Wait. <laughs> Is it with a J? Ah, oh, shiz. It's with a J, huh? It's with a J. I'm a Papega. <laughs> Oopsies. Hmm, am I almost done? Hmm. Mm. <clears throat> Common mistake. Oopsies. <laughs> you know, when I was writing it, I was like, this doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like this is how you spell it, but here... <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't think they have... Do they even have KH for Steam? Is Kingdom Hearts on Steam? Oh, it's on Epic Games? Why do you have an Xbox? Blech! That's crazy that Kingdom Hearts is on PC. That's kind of crazy. Isn't it? What? You can actually play on PC? Oh, what the heck? <clears throat> like, I can't imagine playing this with keyboard mouse. I can't. <laughs> but at least it's accessible. You worked- I took a friend to the airport early, like 3.30. In the morning? Wait. PM. Wait, I can't tell. When you say early, how is 3.30 early? It has to be AM. Worked on music and napped. Nice. I am... Gonna... S what the heck? I am gonna study and then game when the sun goes down. Okay, I should stop being distracted. <laughs> Actually, I need to piss. Give me two seconds. <laughs> Did you make a new song today?
okay. <laughs> Auto correction. <laughs> Wait, so you've played you've played Kingdom Hearts, Momo? Uh, I don't, oh! <laughs> Reverse. Reverse. What are you doing? Go back to your SQL. Go back to your SQL. What are you doing? Go back to the SQL. Get trapped. Go back to your SQL. What the? What are you doing? Inducing double suffering? Suffering with the SQL? And then suffering with the dono? That could have been sushi. That could have been tonkatsu. That could have been ramyun after you're suffering with SQL. <laughs> Fudge. Was I just... I was at 46? No, no. Yeah, so angry. I'm so angry. <laughs> Go back to your suffering. <laughs> we diving in hell. She's diving with us. I hate you guys. <laughs> Reverse. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me trapped. <laughs> I'm never leaving, aren't I? <laughs> I literally feel like I live with you all. Like, yes, I feel like you guys are my housemates and I'm living with you all and I cannot escape this house. <laughs> Appreciate the 10 bomb. Thank you, thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you. That's so kind. But also, please get, please get some good noms after you finish all your work. Because you deserve <clears throat> good noms. Get some sushi. Get some omakase. If I pass this test, I'm getting omakase. If I don't pass this test, I'm going to cry. And not get omakase. <laughs> I want to say if I pass this test, I'll get omakase and I'll scream it. But it's also very awkward because omakase is like very, like a close, it's a very like intimate dining experience with you and the sushi chef so if i were to stream omakase it would be incredibly awkward never mind it's a diagnostic and not this one the the final one this whole subathon is going to be archived as an example of a person descending into madness i'm already there i'm already there into madness what do you mean descending <laughs> i'm trying to move this timer hold on Is that better? Okay, better. Okay. You? Oh, you have a PlayStation, Momo? I thought you were like a PC only player. That's cool. Yes, we'll go cash. You like cooking? Uh, I'm not a good chef, so I could never I could never serve myself <laughs> very well. <laughs> I had lasagna. Ooh. I had a nice dinner. Dinner already? It's five o'clock. <laughs> Buffalo fried chicken. Buffalo kicking chicken with fried potatoes and a chocolate lava cake. Oh, that sounds so good. That sounds so good. <laughs> okay, no more distractions. <clears throat> Back to studies. What game is this? It's not a game, Lucy. <gasps> it's a study stream. Since I'm trapped here for 47 hours, <laughs> I need to study.
Okay, musculoskeletal conditions. An OTR is working with a client with a transtibial lower limb amputation to develop a prosthetic wearing schedule. The client has been gradually increasing wear time from 15 minutes to an hour in a 15 minute increment. Mm, okay. After, after one hour, they notice a red area that remains for 45 minutes after removing the device. So many numbers. <laughs> what is the best course of action to take? Mm. Oh, I feel like these are all pretty good, but it wants the best answer, which I always disliked. Like, all these answers are good, but then it wants the best answer. And I'm like, bro, can you just give me three wrong answers and one right answer? What do you mean the best answer? I want to say because he's not saying that he's in pain. I don't want to cut down the time he's wearing the prosthetic. Could be B. It doesn't seem like it doesn't fit well, so I don't think it's C. It's either B, pad the prosthetic better, or proper residual limb to prevent skin breakdown. Mm, is redness indication that the skin is breaking down, though? Or... Maybe? I, I guess so. It's like irritation of the skin. I'm going to say it's B. I feel like I'm stuck between B and D. But since he's not saying he's in pain, I'm going to say it's B. I mean, it's not B. Medium confidence. What advantage does a functional motion assessment provide when evaluating a client? Mm. B. Yeah, B. For sure, for sure. Confidence high. An OT student is working in a rehab that treats clients with osteopenia? I don't know what that is. The fieldwork educator requests that the student determine whether a walking program can prevent osteoporosis. I know what that is. Okay. What kind of research article would provide the most trustworthy evidence to support a walking intervention? Mm. I think it'd be B. Not C. No, nah, it's not D. It's not A, it's B. Medium confidence. What is the most appropriate position for a client with a hip replacement to perform lower body dressing? Mm. Appropriate, so a hip replacement, perform lower body dressing. Wait, let me think. He has hip precautions. Sitting on the side of the bed? No, that's dangerous. A low chair? Also not appropriate. For a hip replacement patient? Sitting with the feet on a stool? I want to say it's the tub bench, but it doesn't seem right. Mm, when you have a hip replacement, you can't bend past 90 at the hip. Like, you can't go like this. And so, side of the bed is just dangerous. A low chair would... It would cause you to bend over 90. A feet with, feet with a stool? <gasps> Holy shit! Ay, ay, ay! Oh my goodness! That is foul! To do a jump scare when I'm deep in thought? That's just mean. That's just mean, Kohai. 
<laughs> yeah, don't tee hee me. <laughs> Body slam the patient. Ayo, what? Sitting with the feet on a stool? Feet on a stool. I feel like that would also cause... I'm gonna say tub bench. Medium confidence. Provide an in-service for a facility's nursing assistant to prevent back pain or on-the-job in injury. What principle best reflects safe patient lifting? Mm. Safe patient lifting. Keeping feet together to maintain a high center of gravity. That is also good. When lifting, do as much as possible in the transverse plane. Transverse plane. I want to look that up. Because you have like your coronal plane. And then I believe you have your sagittal plane. So your coronal plane's like this. Your sagittal plane is like this. So your transverse plane is like this. Mm. I think I could see that. Use a stoop lift to assist clients not it's not C. Maintain the client's body as close as possible. It could it's D, I think. Actually, you want a low center of gravity when you lift patients. It's not A, it's not C. It's either B. I don't know, I can't really visualize this plane very well. It's... I'm gonna say it's D. <clears throat> Do as much as possible. <laughs> I don't know if I do B without knowing it, but you definitely want to keep the client's body far. I mean, close. I mean, can you imagine, like, lifting someone if they're, like, all the way out here? As opposed to, like, if they were just right here? D. Medium confidence. According to the standards of practice, which of the following is a requirement to practice? Mm, you have to graduate from a private program? Not necessarily. Finishing an independent fieldwork experience? Yes. Graduating, passing state licensure examination for OTs? Yes. Completing licensure certification? And registration requirements? I think it's A. I mean, technically it is D and it is B. But it looks like A encompasses B and D. Which phrase depicts a client factor according to the OT? Best depicts a client factor? Oh, oh, oh no, this is a textbook question. According to the OTPF, a client factor. So that would be like, not C, not A. Not B. Home management, D. You're conducting a cooking group for people with schizophrenia. He writes the following in a progress note after treatment. Participated in 60-minute group cooking in a hospital kitchen to assess, address attention and task completion secondary to delusional thinking. Where would this information be? Mm. It's not the P, it's not the A, assessment to address attention and task completion secondary to delusional thinking. It either be S or O. It's O. It's the objective. My confidence is high. Confirm. 
shifting roles within a sniff to become the manager of the therapeutic recreation department. In what ways does supervision from the OTR change? Um, supervision is no longer needed. I'm pretty sure. Because you're the manager of therapeutic recreation? Mm, then you're not providing therapy, so I don't think you need supervision anymore, so... Um, I think it's A. Medium. Document. School-based OT is completing an evaluation of an elementary school student who has impaired fine motor control and hand weakness. What action should the OT take before completing the evaluation and plan of care? Select the three best choices. Hmm... Hmm. Hmm. Determine how OT services are being reimbursed. No. I think... You should observe the student for sure. It's not F. I don't think it's D. I think the cognitive screening is good. I just don't know if it's A or C. They both are very similar. Read the student's individualized education program. Review the student's individualized family service program. I guess I'm going to go with A. Confidence medium. Okay. I think I'm almost done with my placement test. 13 out of 16. I'm almost done. Hi, Shadow. Hello. I feel bad that I can't read chat, but I'm trying to not be distracted. <laughs> Hi, Shadow. Thanks for the seven stream streak. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Studying is going. It's going. All oh, from HelloFresh. <clears throat> I used to use HelloFresh, too. It's not bad. Hi, Shin. Lift a patient with your back in a jerking, twisting motion. That one didn't sound too bad either. <laughs> Hi, Beetle. Stoop life seems bad. Yeah, that one was not right. <laughs> Lift the patient like Simba and Lion King. Ah, Sabenya. A question about license license requirements has nothing to do with testing your competency with clients. That's so true. It's so true. It's so funny how like, oh, you pass the test and like you're supposed to be competent with clients. But I feel like there needs to be so much more than that. Isn't that crazy that a test about licensing has nothing to do with competency? Hi, Shinobi. I'm using oats overnight. Mmm, overnight oats are so good and so healthy for you. No, the sun is setting. No, sun, stop setting. This has been very peaceful. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Thank you guys for keeping me company while I am um, losing my mind. This is nice. 
A softball player sustained a deep partial thickness burn to the anterior aspect of the right arm. I'm really not confident in burn questions from... Oh, I don't even want I don't even want to read this question. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to read it in my head because this is a lot of words. Deep partial thickness from the wrist proximal to the ulnar styloid process. To the anterior aspect of the right arm from the wrist. Where the heck is the ulnar styloid process? Oh, it's right here. <clears throat> a splint thickness skin graft taken from the thigh was placed on the mid forearm three days post injury. He would like to return to softball practice. What is the best phase of rehab? Elbow extension, splint. Two hours. Upper arm rehab bike, mm, scar massa massage, followed by interactive VR computer sports games. Mm, I really don't know. I just don't have any experience with burn patients. I feel like a splint would not be right. Right? When you put a skin graft, are you supposed to move that extremity? Or are you supposed to not move it and let it heal? Or is it good to mobilize it? I can't remember. Scar massage followed by interactive. But I mean, all these things are saying move it. Like B is mo moving the arm. C is moving it. D is also moving it. But A is keeping it still. Hmm, I don't think it's D. Upper arm rehab bike for 30 minutes twice daily? Hmm, I don't know about that. This song is very silly. I'm switching it. <laughs> Ex elbow extension? Oh, I want to Google so badly just because I have a burning question that I, a, a burning question that I want answered, but I'm gonna assume it is maybe C. Scar massage. No, I'm gonna say it's A. Just kind of guessing. My computer screen is so bright. <laughs> I'm going to turn on Flux because... Do you guys use Flux? It's like a blue light app. And now my screen is orange. I don't know. Does this affect... Does this affect the stream? Can you guys see the change in my screen color? Oh, it does. Oh, I'm orange. Oh, I didn't think you guys would be able to see this. That's crazy. I turned to a Cheeto. Hee <laughs> Funny enough, when I'm not streaming, this is how my computer looks most of the time. Like, I usually have it, like, somewhere here. And I've gotten very used to it, but I would always have this on in college, too, because, you know, blue light hurts your eyes. And then people would pass by my laptop in the library and they would say like oh your computer screen is very orange and i'd i'd be like oh i don't i don't see it because because your eyes adjust my eyes would adjust and like i just i don't notice the orange anymore but people would be like yeah your screen's orange well i, I think it helps a lot when you're when you're staring at the computer screen all all the time i like flux i, I know it's in my settings but i i just i like this app i've been using it since college I'm orange! I'm not orange! I'm orange! I'm not orange! Ch 
two-year-old client was referred to an outpatient burn clinic for management of developing scar tightness in the left hand and wrist. The client's mother is the primary caregiver and has expressed severe guilt about the child's being burned in a fire kitchen fire six months ago. Very overwhelmed with post-burn management program. Difficulty looking at the child's hand during therapy. What should be the initial program the mother should carry out? 